Okay, everyone, welcome to uh, what is somewhat of a new series, I suppose. You know it's going to be good because Chris is dressed like, no, we'll get to him. Oh, Chris, is, to my Chris is dressed like he's <laughs> maybe going to fight a fire today. And I'm dressed like a nimble, what did we, in high school they called me the Irish Panther. So, <laughs> like, you know. With a touch of downs. No, I'm not saying that to, to brag. I'm just saying, hey, when you got it, you know. Show it off. You got it. <laughs> yeah, you got it. So anyway, our buddy uh, Nick, who's been in previous videos um, for when I made a trip down to Arizona, um, maybe give just a kind of quick snapshot of your background. Yeah, sure. Uh, I'm a Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu black belt. I have a Judo black belt. I train in Sambo, a couple different forms of wrestling. I have a background in Filipino martial arts, specifically uh, knife fighting. I have a little bit of firearms training, and I fought MMA and professional Jiu-Jitsu for a little while. Now, I primarily just teach. I teach civilians, but I, my primary focus is on um, local and federal law enforcement, and I teach out of uh, Phoenix, Arizona. Yeah, so. Same, like, similar story for me. Yeah. Um, <laughs> we're not gonna, we're not gonna like, do tell. It's too long, it's just too long. I don't wanna too. get into my martial arts class background. Also. It's like fucking OGA kind of shit, but we're not gonna go down that, right? Um, so anyway, we're gonna be doing some like combative stuff for a few videos, so you'll see these probably popping up like once a week. And I believe first we're talking uh, more conceptual stuff on uh, fixed blade versus folders. Yeah, a little bit of mindset, principle, and concepts. Uh, most people carry a pocket knife, whether it be for self-defense or utility purposes. But most people I hear, they're like, oh yeah, I carry a knife for self-defense, and they're carrying, you know, Benchmade, spider codes, and they're carrying high-end pocket knives. Uh -huh. But it doesn't matter how much the pocket knife costs, they all have the same concept. So that concept that we were kind of talking about um, before is it, the blade is just held to the handle by a screw. Okay, there's, there's not much more than that. So the blade itself might be good, but the fact that it's only held together by that. So from a self-defense perspective, one of the things that uh, I always think about is I'm not gonna primarily just be aiming for your stomach, your leg, like a soft, soft tissue area. You know, what if I were to possibly stab you in the collarbone and this gets caught on bone, right? Mm -hmm. So I go to retract the knife or it gets twisted. Now what we're worried about is that blade breaking off from the handle. And now when I go to retract, I only have a handle with no blade. Yes, you have a blade stuck in you, but let's say you still have a knife in your hand, your adrenaline kicks in, now I'm out of the weapon. I only have a handle to hit you with, mm -hmm. right? So that's, that's one of the issues um, that I do not recommend a pocket knife for self-defense carry. Sure. Um, the other thing too is deploying, right? So one of the things I talk about is you need to be able to deploy. With the firearm, you need to be able to have a, like a really good draw, whether it be IWB or, or you know, concealed or um, outer carry. Well, same thing with a knife. doesn't matter if it's on your belt or if it's you know, in your waistband area, ankle, wherever, wherever you decide to carry your knife. You need to be able to deploy because no one just walks around like this, right? And they're like, okay, I'm gonna get in a fight today. And they're just walking around with a knife in their hand. This isn't the stone age. You don't just walk around with a weapon. And if they some are, guys, some guys do. And if you are doing that, stop. Yeah, you're sketchy. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Um, so a uh, couple things is it's a clip most of the time and it, most people carry it in their pocket, hence the name pocket knife. So just an idea that I kind of wanted to go over is we find ourselves in a situation where we might have to use our knife. So let's say uh, Chris starts hitting me or you know, maybe he has a bottle in his hand, he has some sort of weapon that is gonna make me escalate to a possible lethal situation, right? Mm -hmm. So he starts hitting me. Well, what's gonna happen is if he starts hitting me, my hands naturally are gonna come up. This is defense mechanism, trained or not. If you get hit, natural reaction is hands just come up because you don't wanna get hit, right? Mm -hmm. You have that flinch and uh, you, you're trying to cover the soft area. Well, here's the problem, is if he starts hitting me, in order to get a pocket knife out, I'm gonna have to get my hand into my pocket. So that is now one hand to go down. Now here's the question, people go, well with a fixed blade, you're still gonna have to do the same thing. Sure. Yes, you are correct, but here's the problem. In order to get my fixed blade out, I don't have to stuff my hand into my pocket. So not only am I reaching down there, my hand now could get trapped in assuming you have keys, phone, wallet, whatever else may be in that pocket that the knife is on. Now my hand is getting all bundled up as this guy isn't just one and done. He's probably consecutively hitting me or a beer bottle, ashtray, blunt object, whatever he may have. Well, it's then, easier to trap too, right? Correct. And I get this out. 
right? Let's say my hand didn't get caught in my pocket. Whether spring assisted or not, I'm gonna have to do some sort of wrist motion in order to get this into play. And by then I've maybe been punched six, seven, eight yeah. times. Or so it's, it's quite a bit of fine motor skills and and I know that it could get very debatable in terms of like, well, how do your fine motor skills hold up under stress? Like, I mean, yeah, we've been shooting argument. courses where like, man, this, this it, it's, it's, it's tricky. I'm not taking a position one way or another. I'm not a knife fighter, but like, I would rather have fewer fine motor skills to do under stress Correct. than more. Correct. And that's, that's one of the things is this is going to increase time, right? Cause I have to get my hand in there, yeah. have to pull out then I have to deploy. Just because the knife is out doesn't yeah. mean it's deployed because the blade is not exposed, mm -hmm. right? So even this, I wouldn't consider this deployed because the second I make contact on something, it's gonna reclose. Mm -hmm. yeah. I need it folded all the way out into the fixed blade position, the locking position. Mm -hmm. um, so that's one of the things I, I talk about is if you carry a knife for self-defense, you need to practice deploying it. Just like if you buy a firearm and you're like, I'm gonna carry this for self-defense. You might dry fire, you might be in your home and you practice your draws or from this position, you know? Well, no one practices like, Okay, and then pulling out the knife and getting it out, whether it be fixed blade, you know, horizontal or vertical, or mm -hmm. pocket knife. Mm -hmm. No one practices that. And ways you could practice, you know, doing it without a non-lethal situation is rubber knife, which we'll use later today, and you can use that practicing and getting in your motions. Mm -hmm. So, but no one does it. An argument too I've heard for those is linger lockers. Mm -hmm. I mean, you're talking about a piece of metal just on the edge of another piece of metal. Correct. And so one argument I've heard for not carrying like a folder is say you do go and you hit bone, say the blade doesn't break, but it pops off that detent and slams against your hand. Ooh, okay. Yeah, Which I is a great that. argument. Like yep. you, you know, maybe you deflect and the whole blade just closes on your hand. Yeah. At full like punching force. Yep. That hand's now yeah, potentially uh, out of the fight. Potentially it's gonna be more knuckled oaks when you're holding. True, but it's gonna be here. True, but even then, like say you you fillet that thing open and Yeah. Yeah, you know. no, no, you're absolutely correct. Again, though, it's you're most likely gonna have that adrenaline dump, yeah. that tunnel vision. You, that's one of maybe one of those things after the fight or after the situation yeah. you're just in, you're gonna be like, what happened? For yeah. sure. You're not. Yeah, you probably won't. Even just like breaking that. your hand in a fight. Correct. Yeah. It's one of those things you don't. Most of the time, you don't feel until after, unless you're in the fight. and You're like, why can't I not make a fist? But still, so, another good, you know, con of carrying exactly. a folder. I agree. Right. I agree. So, what I'm trying to get with this is, I would recommend a fixed blade over the pocket knife. Reason being is it's a full piece of steel attached to a handle that has locking pins, right? These are permanent, so these won't come out. So I don't have to worry about this snapping off the handle. Um, and I don't have to worry about this blade breaking, knowing that, you know, obviously for this one, it's gonna be a forged knife, so the steel is very strong. But if I hit bone with this, it might get caught up. I'm probably gonna twist it out, retract the knife, but I don't have to worry about breaking the mm. knife. So I'm still gonna have this in the fight, and knowing that I have to twist and retract, I'm causing more shrapnel damage to your shoulder. So now we're splintering off mm -hmm. bone, ligament, muscle, and uh, soft tissue damage. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's creating another hole too, because if you go on this way, then go horizontal. And that's the way I teach a lot of the guys is like when we stab, it's not here and puncture out. It's not gonna be like a ketchup packet. It's here, twist and retract. So, so like a corkscrew is what you said? Correct, yep. Yeah. yeah, you remember that from last time. Yeah, huh? yep. yep, yep. Check yeah. out that video series. A lot of good info in there. Yep. So. Yeah, that's, uh, that's why I recommend the fixed blade over the pocket knife. It's going to be, one, more durable. Two, you don't have to have that longer uh, deploy time or the way you worded it. Is. And the, sec the third thing is getting my hand trapped in my pocket. I don't like. I don't want my hands trapped at all. Mm -hmm. That's almost like I'm handcuffing myself. I mean, when he wears skinny jeans, there's almost no room for his hand to get in his pocket. So Is it because of skinny jeans or because of something else? Skinny jeans, for oh, sure. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> You're effectively... I wear Losing. slim pants because I'm trying to show off my quads. Or right. is it probably the glutes too. The glutes? I did, it. I did some of those like... I hip. see you doing squats. I wasn't standing, but where you're sitting on the ground and you got the bar on you and you're doing the... Oh. Dick thrusts. Glute, yeah, 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 Glute raises. Yeah. What was the weight you were pushing? There's a lot of hot girls that do those. And frankly, hot girls. But what do they have? They have you're trying a, to get meaty, that out a meaty hind quarters. What's the weight you're pushing on that? What? What's the weight you're pushing on that? A lot. All of it. 40, 80? Triple digits, dog. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's north of a hundo. <laughs> over a hundo? Over. Yeah. Could be 105, but it's over a hundred. <laughs> Don't worry about it. I think The Rock, when he does those, is pushing like 700. Holy crap. And that's my goal, to look like The Rock. <laughs> uh, so anyway, anything yeah. else? No, we're good. Okay. Yeah, we're good. We, we are definitely good here, everyone. On to the next. <laughs> All right, cool. Let me go look at the notebook.